racks on racks, it's coming on time I Had to get the new Ferrari on time Dressed in the latest fashion on time I stay fly, you popping on line take, take, take it to the places where she wanna go See the ice on my wrist, she know I'm getting Cheers, what it is and what it ain't It's yours truly, Liquid Cash I need it all out the stash A.K.A. Money Mitch Hide ya, y'all know the rest And right now You tune into Money Talk, you heard? Hey, listen, man I know y'all haters thought this was prop money But it ain't this is the money phone right here, baby. This is what we, you know what I mean? We dial up the CPA. We dial up, uh, you know what I mean, some of the hustlers. And we chop it up about money. So whenever I have an episode where I got to, you know what I mean, chop it up with a hustler or chop it up with a CPA to discuss about money, we're going to dial them on the money phone. Like I said, I know you haters thought this was prop money, but it ain't. You know what I mean? We having this shit, man. You know what I mean? But anyway, this is the Money Talk Podcast. Well, we just talk about money all day. We speak Guapanese over here. I don't know what nobody else is speaking over there, but over here we speak in Guapanese. It's something I love to talk about, which is money. You know what I mean? But first, we got to get the vibe right. You know what I mean? We're going to get it right. Hold up. I got to get my candle lit. You know what I mean? Because there's three things I love. I love candles. I love beautiful women. And I love money. I'm not in love with none of them, but I love them. You dig? So anyway... Yeah, we're going to get into it, right? Also, I got my agua, you know what I mean? Got to be drinking on the water. Can't get my, thir- my, 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 my throat dry or whatever, whatever. I'm going to be talking a lot of games, so we're going to have to keep it moist. Pause. Check it out. Anyway, I started this podcast because, you know, I wanted to share some of the information that I've acquired along my journey in the getting to this bag, man. You know, I, I, I ran into a lot of... Uh, information reflecting on my life and understanding the things that I did to get to the bag and it's only right pardon me uh, it's only right that I share some of the information you know a lot of times people you know get some game on something and they want to keep it to themselves you know they want to for whatever reason they just like to keep the game to themselves they don't want to share how they made the money that they acquire, you know, and it's like, come on, man, stop it. Like, let's, 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 let's stop that, man. There's enough money to go around. There's enough, man. You don't have to, you know, uh, uh, hold out on the little bit of information, you know, on how to get paper because you feel like another person is going to, you know, outshine you or outdo you. You know, that's the haters mentality. You know what I mean? That's the mentality of a hater. You share the game, baby. Don't give a man a fish. Teach him how to fish. And that's what I'm going to try to do today. But I'm not trying to teach and preach. I'm trying to tell you what I apply in my own life. And hopefully you could uh, apply it in yours and be able to be, do, and have anything and everything you want in your life. Because you truly can, but you have to apply some of the information that I'm going to tell you today. You know what I mean? And, uh... And, the, and uh, it's going it's gonna to be some valuable information, man. I'm not going to just be shooting the breeze. You know, I got things to do. I got a lot of uh, uh, shit going on in my own life. And so if I take time out to do this podcast and give you some of the game that I've acquired along my journey navigating through life, I want you to apply it, man. Nothing that I'm going to say today is going to be meaningless conversation. I don't have meaningless conversation. Anything that I do, I do it with a meaningful intention behind it. And my intention is to give you some of the gain, some of the knowledge that I've gained along my journey and hopefully you apply it. That's money in the bank. You can take that to the bank, you dead. And um, everything that I'm gonna say today is gonna be valuable, man. Like I said, on my last episode, I talk about who do you listen to? You know what I mean? Who do you listen to? You listen to somebody who has what you want and been where, you, where you're where you at, at this particular moment in your life. That's who you listen to. Somebody who have what you want and been where you're at. Don't listen to people who talk about, you know what I mean, getting to the bag, but they ain't got no bag. You know what I mean? And I got, like I said, as I go through this podcast series, you're going to see that I focus on a few things. You know, and, the, and, 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 and I'm, a going, I'm going to keep on repeating certain things because, you know, uh, I, want, I want it to stick in your brain. So 
through repetition, some of the information is going to stick. And to the people who it don't stick with, it ain't time for you to get the information. They got a saying that says, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So when you're ready, the information will definitely reach your earlobes and be able to sink inside of your brain and give you a desire to change things in your life. Because at the end of the day, if you want things in your life to change, you're going to have to change things in your life. And it's just that simple. You know, it's five minutes to learn for the lifetime to master. You know what I mean? I'm still mastering it. You know, and, and the thing about it is you have to master the basics. And I'm going to try to share some of the basic principles on how to get to the bag. Share some of the basic. These are the basic principles. Once you build on these foundations, man, shit, you could change your whole life overnight. But you have to get the basic first. So we're going to try to break down the basics. And I'm going to sp- explain it in the most simplest form that uh, the majority of the people out there can understand. I'm going to share some of the secret principles to get money that most people don't want you to know about. Well, at least the rich people don't want you to know about it. You know what I mean? And why they don't want you to know? They don't want no competition. They don't want you to get rich, too. They, don't, they want to keep you broke and keep you working and, and, and keep you conforming to the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the pack. But over here at the Money Talk Podcast, yeah, we're going to share it, baby. We're going to share it. As y'all noticed, right? Um, Bitcoin just uh, fell down to 47,000. It was up to uh, 60, 60 something thousand and it dropped down to 47,000. I just want to say this, man. Hey, listen, don't get a, don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Bitcoin is still one of the fastest growing asset in the world. I got a Bitcoin course coming up. It's called It's Time for Plan B Crypto Course. And I'm going to be explaining the, uh, uh, you know, Bitcoin in depth and just giving some game on the crypto game. You dig? It's time for us to play the money game. It's time for plan B. It's time to put our money to work. I don't know if you like me, but me, I don't really like to work hard. I like to work smart. So I like to put the money to work. You know what I mean? So I got a lot of money invested in Bitcoin. And I'm going to tell you this, baby. Bitcoin is one of the fastest growing assets in the world. It's beating oil. It's beating gold. It's beating real estate. It's beating whatever you can put it up next to. Bitcoin is outperforming all of those commodities. So listen. So get involved. But listen, stay tuned. At the end of this, I'm going to tell you all about, you know, my five step Bitcoin plan on how to accumulate wealth investing in Bitcoin. Matter of fact, you can click the link inside the description and there will be a link to my five step Bitcoin plan and my five step to my altcoin plan on how to invest in altcoin to uh, reinvest the money in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is where you store wealth. Altcoins is where you, you know, you uh, you make your wealth, you make money. You know what I mean? So you store your money inside Bitcoin and you make your money with altcoins. So I'm gonna get into details in my PDF below, click the description below, and it's the five step Bitcoin plan. I'll have it in the description and I'll give y'all some game on that. But um, the topic today is about teachability index. That's what I'm talking about today, your teachability index. You know what I mean? How teachable are you? You dig? That's what we want to know. How teachable are you? Because there's a lot of um, people want money. But they're not teachable. You can't teach them nothing. You can't tell them nothing. You know, a lot of people get some money and then they reach a a ceiling. They reach a ceiling. Why they reach a ceiling is because they're not teachable anymore. They felt like they know it all. They felt like they know it all uh, and they they really don't. You know what I mean? I'm going to do a segment about do you know how dumb you are? Because you don't know what you don't know. That's going to be on a later episode, and I'm going to get into that. But, you know, most people reach a ceiling because they stop being teachable. They stop being teachable. You got to always be searching for knowledge. Always be searching for more gain because there's a lot more of it. You can never have too much knowledge. You dig? When you acquire some wealth, don't get comfortable. Always be striving to achieve more out of life because if you get comfortable 
you end up losing what you are, you know, losing what you got. Because you got too comfortable, you get relaxed. You know what I mean? I don't get relaxed. I'm always grinding. I'm always striving to get more paper. So, teachability index. Your willingness to learn and your willingness to accept change. That's what the teachability index is. Your willingness to learn and your willingness to accept change. How high is your teachability index? How high is your willingness to learn? How high is your willingness to accept change? See, when I wanted to get off, the, off that rock called the Bahamas, when I wanted to get off that island, and I know some of you think that's a beautiful island, and it, and it truly is a beautiful island. But once you live there and you grow up there, it's a different kind of vibe. You deal with a lot of different type of things, you know what I mean? When you go there as a tourist and you visiting, you know, you, get, you stay around, you know, the tourist area. When you live there and you mixing with the natives, it's a different kind of energy, you know what I mean? So when I wanted to get off that rock, I had to really, <laughs> my desire had to be at a 10, you know what I mean? My, te my willingness to change had to be at a 10. My willingness to learn had to be at a 10. I couldn't just be at a three and think I was gonna get off that island, man. You know what I mean? I had to be ready and willing to do whatever it takes for me to get to the next level of my life. Cause I, I felt like, you know, it was more to life. You know, coming up in the Bahamas, I used to watch BET and MTV every day. Every day I used to watch BET and MTV, just fascinated by, you know, how Americans live. You know what I mean? And how they was, just, you know, being able to, it seemed like they was living the American dream. They was able to buy things they, that we didn't even have on the island, we didn't have on the island. They was able to, you know, drive cars that I've never seen, you know what I mean? Because when you live on an island, you're limited, you know? So, you know, I wanted to come to America to live the American dream, you know what I mean? And um, I was willing to do whatever it take to get there because I felt like it was more to life, you know? It was more to, you know, uh, to my life. And I wanted more out of life. So, you know, um, uh, you know, things happened in my life to, that transpired, that led me to move into New York. And once I got the opportunity to go to New York, I took full, full advantage of it, full advantage of it. You know, even though I was only supposed to stay for six months, I stayed a little longer. And, uh, you know, I turned, I turned, in, uh, I turned, um, a negative situation into a positive one because, you know, I just was in that vibe where, you know, I wasn't trying to go back home because I already know what's, I already know what's back home. You know what I mean? I know what's in the Bahamas. I've been there. You know what I mean? And coming up, I was dealing with a lot of fights, a lot of situations. You know, I was getting into trouble every day. And it was time for me to, it was time for me to change up my life. So anyway, I was willing to do whatever it take. And I seek out the knowledge, the wisdom. And uh, as I got a little older, got a little wiser, you know what I mean? I started making the right moves. But in the beginning, I wasn't making the right moves, you know, because I thought I knew it all. Then I had to, you know, quickly learn that, nah, you don't. You know what I mean? You don't know how dumb you are. You know what I mean? You don't know what you don't know. So, but my desire to learn was very high and I was able to meet a few people in my life to teach me a few things, you know? So coming from Bahamas, I had a cousin that, uh, that, that grew up kind of like in New York, but he was from Jamaica. And he was, uh, he was like the first representation of a hustler that I was able to mimic after because he was definitely not into, you know, working a nine to five. He was a hustler, he was all about just get into the bag anyway, anyhow, you know what I mean? And he was always, you know, getting to some money, man. You know what I mean? Well, anyway, I don't want to get too much in depth about my stories about the hustler life because that's probably on another episode, but I was willing to listen to his advice and take heed to what he said and apply it in my own life. You know, see, it's one thing about, it's one thing to get advice but you have to apply it. Like they say, they say knowledge is power, but that's really partially true. Use knowledge is power. You know, you gotta get the knowledge and you gotta use the knowledge. 
You can't just have knowledge but not apply it in your life, you know, because there's a lot of smart, dumb niggas out there. They know, they know better, but they dumb enough not to do better. You know what I mean? Smart enough to know better, but dumb enough not to give a fuck. You dig? Excuse my language, but that's just the way it is. We're going to tell it how it is, you know what I mean? And I know a lot of them. I got a few friends that's smart enough to know better, but dumb enough not to give up, you dig? And you don't want to be one of those, you know what I mean, people, you know what I mean? You want to be able to apply some of the things that you learn in your life, you know what I mean? And um, that's what I did. That's how I made it, you know what I mean? My teachability index is high. I'm always learning. I'm always, you know, striving to get more out of life. Because a lot of people I meet, they say they want more. They say they want to change. But they really don't. And you can tell by what they do. You can tell by their actions. They make it difficult. They procrastinate. They overthink. They overanalyze. They think about the, the cons and not the pros. You know what I mean? So you already know how their life is going to turn out. Ain't nothing going to change. You can leave and come back 10 years later. They're going to be doing the same thing. Why? Because they're willing to change. Ain't high. They're willing to learn. Ain't high. It ain't out of 10. It's out of 2. It might be at a zero, you dig? But anyway, so you got to remember, in order to change things in your life, you have to change things in your life. Ain't nothing that's going to change just by you just wishing on a star, wishful thinking, wishful, uh, 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 you know, you're you just a dreamer. We don't got time to be just, <laughs> you know what I mean, sitting around dreaming. We're going to talk about executing. Now, I mean, you want to have a plan, but you want to execute on your plan. You dig? So always be looking to learn new information. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. You know what I mean? When you're ready to change, you're going to meet people in your life that's going to help you transition. It's all about not just information, it's transformation. And that's what I want you to understand it's transformation you have to change who you are for what you will become and that's how it goes i had to change who i was and i mean growing up i didn't want to listen to nobody nobody couldn't tell me nothing because i thought i knew it all and i got a lot of ass whoopings because i thought i knew it all you know what i mean and i i'm thankful that i got my ass whooped because i learned you know what i mean that 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 taught me that you know what yeah, you got, you got to change something about yourself. You know, a lot of people don't want to change. And that's the reason why they broke. How you going to get money doing the same, you're doing the same thing over and over, and you think you're going to just get money out of the blue? You think you ain't going to change nothing out of your life? You think you're just going to be the same person, do the same things, and, you, and, and, and just money's going to come to you? Your thinking, your best thinking, got you where you at now in your life. Your thought process, let me say this again, has got you where you at right now in your life. You know what I mean? Your thought process. If you broke, your thoughts got you there. If you're doing good, your thoughts got you there. You know what I mean? If you're mediocre, your thoughts got you there. You know what I mean? If you're living in a particular place that you don't want to live in right now, your thoughts got you there. If you're working at a job you don't want to be at right now, your thoughts got you there. It's the power of thought. Y'all gotta get, listen, man. It's your thoughts that create your reality. You have to change the way you think in order to change things in your life. It's just that simple. You know what I mean? I wanna curse, but I gotta, you know, my pops told me I gotta chill out with the cursing. So, you know, I'm gonna take his advice. But it's your thoughts that got you where you at, man. You know what I mean? And you don't want to learn nothing. Your teachability index is low. So, <laughs> shit, you can maneuver and, you know what I mean, change up. You can't, you got to be willing to change. You know how many women that I meet and people that I meet that don't want to change their fucked up behavior? Their, li they, their life is in shambles. They don't got, they, they don't, they, 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 they paying their bills late. They not driving a the car they want. They not living at the place they want. And a lot of these people got roommates. And there's nothing wrong with having roommates. I had roommates when I was coming up grinding. 
and um, trying to get my life right. But at some point, you have to be able to get your own shit. It ain't nothing like living alone. I don't care what nobody tell you. It ain't nothing like living alone. And if a person don't want to live alone, they scared to be alone. They scared of who they are. They scared to look in the mirror. They scared of themselves. They don't know who they are. And they scared to find out who they are. Because it ain't nothing like coming home and coming to a house and it's just your energy. You don't got to deal with nobody else's energy. It's just your energy and you're on your own time and you're, you're on your own schedule. And you, you, if you want to walk around butt ass naked, you can because you're on your own time, own schedule and you live alone. You dig? Ain't nothing like that, man. Cause I, 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 for some, I just don't like living with, you know, other people just because I love myself. I love being around me. You know what I mean? I love my energy. I love the way I smell. I like the way I feel. I like the way, you know what I mean? I eat. I like the food that I cook. I don't want to come home and you're cooking in the kitchen and you cooking something that's stinking up the whole house. Nah, that's not the, that's not my way. That's not the wave I want to be on. So. There's a lot of people I meet on a daily basis. They life in shambles, man. Their life is all messed up and they don't want to change. They think they got it all figured out. They don't want to admit that they don't got it all figured out. You know what I mean? You got to be able to admit to yourself that you don't got the answers. You know what I mean? You got to be able to admit that to yourself. Because if you're not, you just gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be sad, man. Your life is. It's a sad thing, but you definitely not gonna be doing have anything and everything you want in your life. See, most people, if you ask them, do you think you're gonna be successful, they will say yes. If you ask them, do you know the meaning from right from wrong, they'll say yes. But. In actuality, how many people are actually applying the things that they believe or they think they know? You know, if you ask a person, do you think if you think positive, you're going to get positive results? Nine out of ten people will say yes. But how many people out there are thinking positive? How many people are thinking positive when circumstances are negative? You know what I mean? Most people, when a negative event happen, they think negative. They react negatively, but they're expecting positive things to happen in their life. You're going to have to change your thought process. You're going to have because if you keep thinking like you've always thought, you'll continue to get like what you've always got. And the reason I'm focusing on these topic on this topic is because. These are the basic, these are the basic principles when it comes to getting money. You got to understand, it's, 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 it's a basic, it's a science to getting paper. It's a science to it. Don't let nobody fool you. It's a science to getting paper. If you're a drug dealer and you're trying to, you know, uh, turn one into two and two into four and four into eight, it's a science to it. You can't just get a, like, let me tell y'all a story. When I was first coming up and I was trying to get into the streets, hustling and grinding, um, I ended up selling, you know, crack at an early age, right? When I first got to New York. Now, in the Bahamas, drugs was nothing that I was into, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I don't know, for whatever reason, I wasn't into it, you know what I mean? And, and, and the Bahamas is a big drug island. It's like you know, the biggest uh, drug hub back in the days, and it probably still is. But anyway, when I moved to New York, I didn't have uh, all of my documents together, so I couldn't get a decent job. And that's just the reality of it, right? So I ended up selling drugs. Now, now my drug episode kind of went like this, right? I'm gonna tell y'all later on in another podcast on how I got into selling drugs. But I didn't know what I didn't know. So at a particular building that I used to stay at by a chick that I used to go see once in a while, you know, a little chick I used to, you know, deal with. 
And in her building, she had a neighbor. And the neighbor was, I found out later, was a functioning drug addict. Now, I, at this time, I didn't know what a functioning drug addict was. So I had some crack, and I, and, and, I, but, and I knew he was an addict, but he was a functioning addict. He was in an addict that you see on the corners or, or, or you see walking around looking like zombies. So I didn't know no you know, addicts at the time. I, he was the only person I knew, so I told him to test the crack out to see, you know what I mean, the potency of the drug. I said, okay. He told me, he tested out, he told me I got some good product. So, okay, cool, I got some good product. So now I'm thinking in my mind, how I'm gonna sell this product? How I'm gonna get, it, how I'm gonna get the product off? Because the person who I got the drugs from, who sold me the eight ball, didn't give me the manual on how to sell drugs. You know what I mean? Like, in mind, you gotta remember, I'm young at this time. So he didn't give me the manual, you dig? So I had to learn on my own. So I gave, I, I thought to myself, you know what? The, 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 the functioning addict, he's an addict, so he probably know other crackheads. So why not give him the crack to sell? So here I go, you know, giving a drug addict some cracks to sell. I'm bugging. That's like the first mistake you could ever make. I gave him the drug to sell. The nigga came to me two days later, told me the drug was good. He didn't sell none. He smoked it all up. And I'm like, what the fuck? So, you know, I had to put hands and feet on him. But, you know, but I say that to say, like, come on, man. You don't know what you don't know. Nobody gave me the manual, but I had to learn through trial and error. You know what I mean? I lost out on that pack. Why? Because I didn't, I didn't, uh, uh, you know, ask nobody. I didn't go to my local, you know, drug dealer at the time and say, yo, how do I get this off? And mind you, at that particular time, I live, uh, uh, I was renting a room, right? And my aunt had this house and she was renting, a, she had a, a particular section where it had five bedrooms and she was renting all of the rooms out. So I was renting one of the rooms out inside of the uh, particular apartment downstairs. And w one of the guys that was renting one of the rooms was uh, a, 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 a drug dealer, but he used to sell heroin. And I found out later that he was a functioning addict too because you know, every other morning he would be waking up six o'clock to go push his heroin. But when he come back and he, you know, he, I don't know, for some reason he'll be done at, he'll start at six and he'll be done at seven. And when he come back and he comes out the room, he will be leaning. And I learned later on that heroin addicts, they lean once they, uh, once they get high. So he will be leaning damn near, you know, on some humpback of Notre Dame type shit, leaning, walking through the house. So I found out later that he was a functioning addict. I could have asked him, but you know, like I said, young adults don't ask enough questions. And when they do ask a question, they ask the, uh, the wrong question to the wrong people. So they nine out of 10 times don't get the right answer. But I should have asked him. I should have used my own uh, advice. And I'm telling you right now, find somebody who wants to, who's doing what you want to do, pick their brain and apply what they tell you. So anyway, long story short, short story long, pardon me, that's my phone. Long story short, short story long. And um, I end up losing out on that pack. And later on, I end up talking to the drug dealer that I live with and getting some game on how to maneuver. But you know, I get into that story, more stories about my life coming up and trying to hustle in the streets and trying to, you know, make something out of nothing later on. But that was my experience, not understanding that, you know, your teachability has to be high. You don't know what you don't know. And I did not know that you don't give drugs to a crackhead to sell. You just don't do that. That's like hustler mistake 101 you do not give drugs to a cracker to sell but at the time i didn't know how to get it off i gave it to him lost out on the pack you know put hands and feet on him but ultimately i didn't get my drug back i lost but anyway yeah, i didn't give up though you know what i mean that's the most, most important i didn't give it up but i'm not ex advising nobody out there to sell no drugs don't get into it it's a waste of time stay in school get your money the legal way 
You dig? You ain't got to look over your shoulders. You can spend your money comfortably. Because at the end of the day, man, you get all the money, uh, 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 you know, nowadays selling drugs and you can't spend it the right. You can't spend it comfortably. You know what I mean? You can't go to the dealership and buy the car that you want because, shit, at the end of the day, you have to have a nice credit score. Unless you're dealing with a, you know, a dealer that don't give a shit and he doing it under the table. But when you're spending big lumps of money, you have to, uh, or when you're getting big lumps of money, you got to have the paperwork to match that. You dig? So I advise anybody, don't get into the drug dealing. Don't get into anything illegal. Stay in school. Uh, 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 you know, be an entrepreneur and do it the right way so you could definitely uh, spend your money comfortably. Anyway, teachability index. I could spend hours on this topic. Your teachability index has to be high. You have to be willing to learn new things. Don't think you know it all. Don't think you got all the answers. You do not have all the answers. Ask somebody and pick their brain and find out what you need to know in order to get the things you want out of life. What's your willingness to learn? What's your willingness to change? How you know that your willingness to learn and your willingness to change is high? You ask yourself, what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to give up? You have to be willing to give up. Um, hold on one second. I got to send a text real quick. You know what I mean? Forgive me, but you know, it is what it is. It's real life. All right? Anyway, what are you willing to give up? You know what I mean? That's how you know if your teachability index is high, and that's how you know if 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 you really if you're really ready to achieve the things you want out of life. You have to be willing to give up something. You cannot get something for nothing. I don't care what it is. You cannot get something for nothing. You have to be willing to give up something in order to receive something in return. Ask yourself, what are you willing to give up? And that's how you know if your teachability index is high. My teachability index is up to the roof. Every day, I'm reading every day. I'm applying the information that I'm telling you today. I'm not just giving you, you know, uh, giving you the game. I'm actually applying this in my everyday life. This is something that you need to apply if you're trying to be, do and have anything and everything you want out of your life. This is valuable information. This is the information motherfuckers don't want you to know. They are not going to tell you this information. Rich people don't want competition, so they do not give you the information. They stay rather tell you a little bit where you acquire a little bit of wealth or a little bit of money, but they don't give you the bulk of it. I'm giving you some of the game that I've learned along my journey, and, 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 and this is valuable information. You have to be willing to give up something in order to receive something in return. Your teachability index gotta be high. You have to always be searching for information. Always be ready to learn new information. You know what I mean? Hold on one second, I gotta send another text. My bad, it is what it is. We recording and it's live. You know what I mean? But like I said, like I said, hey, listen, this is valuable information, man. Don't sleep on it. Apply it in your life. Your teachability index got to be high. And this is how you, and let me talk about teachability index for a second more in depth. When I was coming up in school, right, um, you know, there were certain subjects that I was, you know, interested in. Like I had an English teacher and her name was Mrs. Ricketts. She had some beautiful legs. Oh man, she had the best legs in the world, like Mrs. Rickett. Her face was a, her face was a five, but her legs was a ten. You dig? Well, anyway, I used to love English class, you know, and I was very uh, attentive when I went in that class. You know what I mean? 
My teachability index was high. As soon as I get in that class, I'm attentive, I'm ready. Why? I don't know, maybe because I'm looking at these nice legs. But anyway, I was in depth and ready to soak up the knowledge. But as soon as that class was over and I had to go to social studies, my teachability index dropped. Why? Because I end up skipping that class and doing some bullshit with some friends. You know what I mean? Whatever that may be. I would, you know, skip school and we would go smoking or go, you know, smoking BDs. I don't know if y'all remember BDs. Anyway, we would smoke BDs or, you know, and just bullshit. That's when your teachability index drop. Or at least mine's drop at that particular time. When And that's what I want you to understand. You always have to be aware of your teachability index. The moment you are not doing something that move you forward to achieving your goals, that's when your teachability index drop. If you stop uh, uh, doing what you want to do, which is something productive, and pick up your phone and watch a YouTube video, or, or, or you pick up your phone and you know start playing a video game, or you're doing something that's counterproductive to what you really want to do, which is achieving your goal, that's when your teachability index has dropped. Mine's dropped when it was time for me to go to my social studies class. And I would go, you know, playing around with my homies and skipping school and doing other bullshit. You know what I mean? So I want you to understand your teachability index could be high one hour and then be down to the damn, uh, drop to the floor in the next hour. You dig? So you always have to be aware of your teachability index engage yourself and, and, and on where your teachability index is at and you always want it to be at a 10 you, you you it has to be at a 10 you know what i mean in order for you to acquire the things you want out of life if you're trying to chase a goal you have to be ready to learn and your desire of to achieve that goal has to be high you have to have a magnificent obsession that's what napoleon Hill calls it a magnificent obsession to your goal. You have to be obsessed with your goal in order to achieve it. And you have to be uh, aware of your teachability index and understand that it has to be out of 10 at all times. Check yourself, you dig? At all times, Even I do it every day, man. Like I said, again, I apply this in my own life. This is how I got to where I'm at today. Applying these principles, man, you have to apply it. If you don't apply it, how do you expect it to work? It's not going to work. Everything I'm going to be saying is going to go through one end, come through the next, and you're going to lose it. You know what I mean? It's five minutes to learn, a lifetime to master. It's going to take a long time for you to master some of this information I'm talking about, but these are the foundation. Rule one, who do you listen to? Rule two, your teachability index. Who do you listen to? You listen to somebody who's been where you're at. Matter of fact, let me recite that uh, differently. You listen to someone who has what you want and been where you're at. Your teachability, your teachability index is your willingness to learn and your willingness to accept change. They have to be at a 10. You dig? Find you a mentor. Pay attention to your teachability index. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. When you're ready, you're going to meet people that's going to take you to the next level of your life. You know what I mean? Pay attention. Take their advice. Knowledge is power. Huh. Partially, but use now knowledge is true power. You have to use the knowledge that you gain on a daily basis. This information that I'm saying to you today, I want you to use it. I want you to apply it in your daily life. You know what I mean? Nobody that I know from my community is talking about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to give you some of the game that I'm applying in my own life. Like I said, I'm not here to preach and teach. I'm telling you what I'm doing. And if you find value in some of the things that I say, apply it in your life. We're going to touch bases on a lot of these topics. You know what I mean? There's four steps to be doing and having anything you want in your life. And step one is who do you listen to? Step two is teachability index. And the other four steps I'll tell you later as I, you know what I mean, progress in this podcast. 
You know what I mean? This is my second episode. I cover the Teachability Index, and I can go more in depth on this particular topic, but I'm not going to talk to y'all all goddamn day because I got an appointment to go get my back rub and a massage and get my feet done and all this other good stuff that I got to do. Self-care, self-development. I'm always working on myself every day. You know what I mean? I got to hit the gym. I got to work out. So I, I think I spent a good about, you know, a good hour with y'all, maybe 30 minutes. I don't know. I'm not timing it, but whatever it is, I spent enough time to give y'all some valuable information. And I want y'all to share this information with your friends. Share this video. Like the video if you find value in the video. Like it. And this is, a, like I said, this will be on Spotify, Apple Music. I hope you'll share this, share this information with your friends. Don't keep it to yourself. This is my podcast, Money Talk. I'm telling you the secrets they don't want you to know on how to get money. A lot of people are not sharing the game on how to get wealth. They're giving you bits and pieces, but they're not giving you the meat and potato. They're not getting to the bottom of how to apply yourself to get more out of life. And what you have to do is change your, the way you're thinking. The way you're thinking, you have to change your thoughts. Because if you continue to think like you've always thought, you'll continue to get what you've always got. You know what I mean? And if you want things in your life to change, you have to change things in your life. That's just it. That's how it goes. You dig? I'm giving you the game. Apply it. Use it. Also, I want you to sign up to my Power of Thought book club on Facebook. I also want you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I also want you to hit me up if you need some one-on-one consultation. Because I, yeah, I got more game, baby. I know you can use it. I got a lot of, you know what I mean, more game. I'm not giving you, I'm not giving you all of it, but I'm giving you what you need to apply today in order to get the things you want out of life.